Three, two, one. Welcome to the Gullah Museum. I'm Janet. It's good to meet you. Uh, the bottle trees came from the Congo okay. in Central Africa. Uh, that's where the ancestors of the Gullah Geechee are from. They're from West Africa and Central Africa. So this tradition is about warding off evil. So there are different evil spirits um, in Gullah culture. So there's boo hags, hags, plat eyes, and um, haints. Haints are probably the most famous. That's where haint blue comes from. So you put these bottles, blue ones, in your yard on a tree, and that wards off evil. Awesome. Cool. So the ancestors of the Gullah Geechee were brought here to grow rice. When the European colonists tried to grow rice, they failed. When they found out that there were Africans that knew how to grow rice, they told the slavers to get Africans from the rice coast of West Africa. So this is what rice looks like when it's still in the husk. I like to show this to people because I don't think very many of us have seen rice in this state. So growing rice is a very technical endeavor. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know engineering. You have to know ditch digging. You have to know about astronomy. And you have to know about tides and, of course, building. So one of the things people don't realize is the South Carolina coast and the Georgia coast did not look like it looks now before the enslaved Africans came. Before then, it was beach and then swamp. And the swamps were heavy with cypress trees and gum trees and all the brush and whatever else that grows in a swamp. So before they could create the rice fields, they had to clear all that land. And they did it by hand with, and with rudimentary tools. And in the end, I think they cleared probably about 40,000 acres of land to create the rice plantations. A lot of people don't know that Georgetown County was home to more than 100 rice plantations. At one point, Georgetown uh, County and the city of Georgetown, very, very wealthy. One of the things people don't know about rice in South Carolina, for the most part, is rice and indigo, those, are, those were the two major cash crops in colonial times. Those made Charleston, South Carolina, one of the richest cities in the world, and it made the state of South Carolina, or the colony at that time, the richest of the 13 original colonies. Now, these are just some of my parents' um, black memorabilia collection and their African artifact collection. And of course, we have to include, if we're talking about Gullah Geechee people, we have to include food, because we're very well known for that. But what people may not know is things like okra, cow peas or field peas. Those were things that were brought over by the Africans or by the slavers of the Africans from Africa. And the African word, uh, the West African word for okra is actually gumbo. So you're eating okra stew, folks. But we call it gumbo. My mother, and this is her, she was the driving force behind the museum and everything you see here. And she was an amazing um, Gullah elder, activist, and artist. And we specialize in our story quilts here at the Gullah Museum. So this is the Gullah Omen story quilt. And this quilt tells the story of the Gullah Geechee people from our origins in Africa to America. So each panel tells part of the story. And then, of course, we have our Gullah Geechee midwife quilt that my mother made to honor her mother because she was a midwife. And in fact, this is a birth certificate of a child that my grandmother helped bring into the world. 
Now, at the turn of the last century, Gullah Geechee women went to the Penn Center for training in Western medicine. Some of them were probably already midwives. Some of them were probably first time midwives, but they went to the Penn Center and that's where these photos are from. One of the quilts we're proudest of here at the Gullah Museum is the Michelle Obama family story quilt. This is a, a replicate of the original quilt. The original quilt is now part of the um, Smithsonian's permanent collection. And the story behind this quilt is a guy called my mother before the first Obama inauguration and said, we're doing a special quilt for Obama exhibit in DC, would you like to participate? My mother, of course, wanted to participate. And then he told her, I need the quilt in 15 days. Well, my mother hadn't created the quilt. So she um, quickly made up all the different pieces of this quilt. And then she got her quilting circle together. These are the ladies from the quilting circle. And um, most of whom were in their 70s when they made the quilt. And those ladies knocked that quilt out in 14 days. And so each panel of the quilt tells the story of Michelle Obama's family. Now, a lot of people don't know she is Gullah Geechee. Her family is from Georgetown. They were enslaved on a plantation, originally enslaved on a plantation about 10 miles away from here. And like many Gullah Geechee, they moved into town after freedom. So this handsome young man is Dr. Lorenzo Dow Turner. We call him the father of Gullah studies. Um, Dr. Turner was the one who did the re scholarly research um, and was able to prove that the Gullah language is in fact a language. It's not broken English, baby talk, or bad English. It's the first English Creole ever developed in the United States. One of the things that he discovered when he was interviewing Gullah Geechee people in South Carolina and Georgia was something called the Mende Song. Now, Mende Song is a five-line song that was only sung by one family in Georgia. Now, this family passed this song down like a family heirloom from mother to daughter, mother to daughter, not knowing the meaning of the song, not knowing that it was in a foreign language, just that it was a family heirloom. Eventually, linguists and ethnomusicologists found the song and they decided to go over to Sierra Leone and try and figure out where it came from. So they went over to Sierra, Sierra Leone and they played this recording all around the country. Now this is Dr. Turner's original recording. Now, they didn't have any luck at first. And they finally were in a very remote part of Sierra Leone, which is where um, the Mende language is spoken. And they played that song, and a woman began singing along to it. So there's a beautiful documentary called The Language You Cry In on YouTube that you can watch for free. And um, it tells the story of how they were able to reunite this family in Georgia with their tribe in Sierra Leone which as you know is very rare and almost unheard of. 